Hi, this is James, and we're going to continue on in the audio mixing class level one, the basics. Uh, we just finished looking at hardware, and now we're going to start looking into the audio theory. So where we left off was looking at the hardware. We just finished off looking at the speakers. Uh, and so now uh, we were talking about, you know, air movement, and this is an ideal time for us to really start talking about that with audio theory, because sound is air movement and where you know lower frequencies would cause air to move slower and high frequencies would cause air to move faster so slow for low and faster for high frequencies and of course the more a speaker moves back and forth the more air is being moved and so that's why when we look at things like woofers and so on sometimes we notice a woofer is allowed to travel uh, quite a bit farther maybe on one speaker and on another speaker it's not allowed to travel as far and you, you may see that in term the differences in terms of one speaker might have more bass than another one might, might get louder than another one and that's really because of the physics where you, the speaker can travel more um, and therefore pr uh, push more air and be able to get louder so that's how that works so how does sound move well when we look at the at the sound itself low frequencies tend to move air around edges so within our room low frequency will uh, tend to move the air more around the room and not so much in the center of the room high frequencies tend to go straight so if you've ever had that time where you sit down as you listen to your home stereo system and you have that one seat cushion that you sit on and as you're there, the sound comes in and it's just, you're right in the zone, it's the perfect spot. And if you move one seat cushion over to one side or to the other, it's just not as clear. Well, that's because the high frequencies go in that straight line and go directly at, at that area. And that's how high frequencies work. They're very precise in that sense. And depending on your speaker type, you might have a speaker type that's very directional on your high frequencies or is capable of providing a nice distribution cone of high frequencies as well too. In any case, the thing is, is that high frequencies move straight. Low frequencies move around edges. Middle frequencies are kind of a little bit of both. So the higher it is, the more direct it is. The lower it is, the more it wants to start moving around the edges. So that kind of gives you an idea of that. So if you looked at a woofer, then a good representation of the base frequencies of that would be that air moves around the speaker. Whereas if it was high frequencies, air would move in front of the speaker. So that kind of gives you that sort of idea. So, um, and at the same time, we can also look at other things that might affect how sound works with, within a room. And so what else can affect the sound? It could be humidity, it could be temperature. Uh, humidity affects higher frequencies, temperature affects feedback points. And um, if we might know about the speed of sound, maybe we learned about it in school, where um, within the formula, the formula included temperature. And so at such and such a temperature, and you, you used the constant and you made your calculations out and then it gave you the speed of sound. Then it varied a little bit. So the sound might have been a little faster, a little bit slower. And so what that means is, is that in a room, if you have a given size of a room, because you know sound can travel uh, at a certain speed, you could actually calculate with your walls that you have in the building what the speed of uh, what what speed would have to be in this space and you could uh, you know based on your temperature and you could actually figure out that this length would be a certain wavelength in other words it would be a certain frequency that would be there um, and with that frequency that would give you what your feedback frequency would be based on the room because the rooms have uh, basically um, modes like areas where you can have modes where you can have uh, this frequency which is going to resonate more because of the dimensions of the room and because of that you 
would have feedback points. And these feedback points can be eliminated by putting in feedback filters in your system. But because that might change based on temperature, you might need at some point to redo your filters. So um, keep in mind if your variations of temperature are only like a few degrees plus and minus, you're not really going to have that issue. If you're having larger temperature swings of over 10 degrees, at that point you might start noticing something that suddenly this feedback point which you put a filter in uh, is now suddenly starting to ring again. It might be because you had uh, uh, changes in temperature where you know um, it's now a hot summer and there's no air conditioning in the space and it's getting pretty hot in here. Whereas uh, when you had put the filter, it was, uh, you know, it was cold and the heaters were not really working full at that time and it, it was still kind of cool in the space. So that would sort of give you an indication that you know, I have to fine tune my filters you know, based on those temperature changes. Also, the humidity does take effect as well too. And if we look at the graph, um, on the right side, it says relative humidity, humidity and percentage, and it also shows a graph which says attenuation. And you notice how the, the lines go up. Well, the thing is, is that attenuation is actually not an increase. It shows, it kind of looks like an increase, but attenuation is actually a decrease. And the difference between, uh, let's say, humidity at about 50, 60%, and humidity closer to about 18% or so, um, on the high frequencies, it, it kind of shows that it's almost a reduction of half of the volume in high frequencies uh, when you have that humidity swing. And so if you have a lot of high humidity swings, you might notice your high frequencies dropping down a little bit uh, within the room. And so you might need to compensate for that. Again, it's something to think about if you do notice there are changes. In most cases, your humidity swings are not gonna be as drastic, so you might notice a change of two or three decibels. And we're gonna talk more about uh, decibels as well too. So now, decibels is actually a measurement of hearing or how loud something is. So one decibel um, is a change in sound pressure level, which is about the smallest the human ear can perceive. However, most people cannot hear a single decibel. Most hear about a three decibel change. And uh, when, I, when I've had students in the class and we've gone and made an adjustment, I made a one decibel adjustment, I would ask them, did I raise it, did I lower it? About half of the students would say, you raised it, half would say you lowered it. And it was like that in every class. I mean, I've never had any, any class where everybody was right, you know, where everybody had the same answer. It was always a split because you couldn't really tell. It was a guess. It was like a 50-50, I don't know how you know, heads, tails, you, they just didn't know, they couldn't tell. And when I changed three decibels, they could tell, oh, you raised it, oh, you lowered it. And that was much more of a noticeable change. It's something for you to know that when you change one decibel or two decibels, it's really imperceivable, like you don't really notice it, like the majority of people don't notice it. And if you are going to have uh, a, a correction, which you make, let's say for feedback, you may only need to change one or two decibels in order to correct feedback and eliminate it. But you can make that change without people hearing a change in volume. In other words, you can still maintain that volume. Whereas if you have a three decibel change, it's something that people notice. Ah, it went up, it went down, that sort of thing. Also, um, if you increase 10 decibels, it's about twice as loud. If you decrease 10, 10 decibels, it's about half as loud. And I say 10, it's, it, it's, a, it's kind of between 6 and 10, but it is closer to 10 that people kind of notice it as a doubling or a half of volume. So um, that's it for the uh, audio theory. And uh, so the next one that we'll be going on to is microphone techniques and so we'll be wrapping up this video now and I'll see you in the next one.